Okay, here's how to add questions into Peerwise. So you've set up your Peerwise account. Uh, you can come into your main menu and you can start to add in questions. And you can add these questions in fairly easily. Just go to your questions and view them. And if you've created questions, they'll be listed here. I haven't created any yet, so I'll create a new question. And now I quite simply just put in my question here and then I put in A, B, C, D, E uh, solutions. So it can be as easy, and you notice when I click on here I get a little bit of an editor. It can be as simple as uh, solve for X if X plus 3 equals 10. And so there's your question. Um, and then you can go down to your alternatives. So one answer might be 7. Uh, that's the correct answer, I think. 7 plus 3 is 10. Another answer might be, say, 13, uh, 3, uh, negative 7, none of these. And then you have to select which one's correct. So it's, in this case, it's A that was correct. And then I go down here and I explain uh, why that one was 7, uh, because 7, whoops, 7 plus 3 is 10, so you can write some sort of explanation in here, and then you can put whatever topics you would like, so you might want to call this algebra. Of course, that's all grade 8, and we want to do something a little bit more interesting for Math 12, so maybe your question is more along the lines of uh, the fact that you, you're given, say, f of x uh, equals x plus 1 divided by x minus 3, and you're given that g of x equals, say, x minus 1 divided by x minus 3, uh, find the domain of the composition of x divided by g, uh, uh, sorry, f divided by g of x. Uh, so there's a much more Math 12 question. Now these answers of 7, etc. aren't going to be right, and not necessarily even a is going to be the right answer, so I'll delete these. Um, and now I want to answer, oh, maybe I'll leave none of these as the last one. Uh, so now I want to answer this question. So some people might think that uh, x could be any real numbers. Some people might think that x uh, cannot be um, 3. Uh, some people might think x cannot be uh, 1 or 3. Uh, some people might think x cannot be 1 minus 1 or 3. And then none of these, and none of these turns out to be the correct answer, I think, for this. Um, I'll leave that up to you to look at. Actually, I think it's C. Uh, actually, no, it's none of these. And now I put my explanation in here. Now, the way that this looks, to me, it's readable, it's okay, but it's not perfect. I always like to try to model how uh, real mathematicians would enter things, and, and that's not too bad, but I want to show you how to write this out in a little bit better text, a little bit better um, mathematical symbols, and that's using this HTML editor. When you, when you click on that, you'll bring up whoa, all this stuff. Basically, the first paragraph has that information and then the paragraph ends and it starts some new paragraphs. This is actually just kind of garbage right there. It's just that I've hit enter twice. It's uh, If I delete and go back a couple spots and I look at that HTML it should be kind of cleaned up. So uh, I'll just go down, let me just do a couple paragraph breaks uh, and I know a little bit of HTML so I have a bit of an advantage but um, maybe instead I want it to say given and then instead of f of x is equal to, and kind of just this type that you get here, I want to make it look like a real math equation. And uh, there's some resources that I have for you that'll help with this. One of them is this simple piece of code that I have uh, stickied for you here. And um, this piece of code, when you put it in here, 
um, refers to an image and it sources out that image from a website but this is the cool part this little piece right here can be rewritten so if I hit update it puts that in as and you can see it's kind of like an image like a little bit of uh, cool math equation and and that can be changed so this little piece right in here can be changed and what I want to change that to is something that looks a little bit more like this so f of x equals and then I want to get a fraction and to get a fraction I use the backspace frac f r a c and then I use this symbol which is a squiggly bracket I do the numerator x plus 1. I close that with a squiggly bracket, open up the denominator, x minus 3, and I close that. And that will compute this piece right here, I hope. There it is. So I've taken this and I've inserted it as a nice little image. Now of course I want to continue, I want to have this g of x part as well. So uh, I won't end the paragraph, I'll just keep typing and and now I want to put a g of x formula in. Once you get this formula once then we can just copy and paste it and the g of x formula, so g and uh, the g of x formula will have a minus one on the top. Oops. Uh, x minus 1 on the top and the x minus 3 on the bottom and that should appear now and I do want to continue this so I'm just kind of bouncing back and forth out of this HTML editor and uh, I can continue I don't want the paragraph to end uh, and whoops find and now I probably want this to look the same so I'll paste this in again and I want uh, I don't need this f of x, I want a bracket, I want a fraction to show up with f over g, and then I want to close the bracket and have x. So this will be f over g of x, I hope. There it is, f over g of x. So I can delete this part. So you can use the editor and the non-editor, um, the HTML editor and this regular editor. Uh, and now, now I've got a beautiful equation um, and what you've actually been using is a type of um, format this is HTML but this format here is actually called latex and if you want to learn little tricks like this frac this backslash frac and some other tricks then there's a great website for that um, and it's this one and if I go there it looks like this um, and you can see things like how to make fractions and they give you uh, examples of uh, making fractions so you can do radicals you can do all sorts of advanced equations and you can do symbols as well so there's uh, the math symbols and the math like commands I'm in commands right now all of these kinds of things and under the symbols I can learn about how to do um, some operators or relations and things like that so all of these kind of cool symbols that you might not know where they are on the keyboard all of these things can show up um, so you can have like not equals which might be really useful because uh, I think back here under one of my so that, that's good uh, down here for instance I, I wanted to say not equals 3 so instead of this I could go into the HTML editor and I could say okay well I want that picture and I want in here X and then it was not uh, it's backslash and let's just go double check what it says it says backslash not equal so I just come back here and I say backslash not equal and then it was it doesn't equal three and I update that ah there it is and then I can if you're smart you don't want to have to keep typing this uh, code in so I just copy select all this and copy it and I can go into my next one and I can delete that enter the HTML paste it in and I can say not three and not one and I can update that and down here same sort of thing HTML not three not one not negative one update that the none of these is fine now XER that'd be kinda cool if I could make it actually look like XER and we certainly can do that so there's my code and I want X and I want belongs to the set of the sideways E so if I go back into my 
site here, I, I could look through all of these and see if I could see belongs to. And this is really close right there. Oh, here it is. Uh, so it's slash or backslash in. So uh, backslash in. And then I want that R symbol. And so, wrong page. Uh, if I go way down here, I should be able to find real numbers. In fact, one thing I can do is just do a, a search of that page. Oh, it won't come up. So I might have to actually look through. Oh, there it is. Real numbers, slash RE. That looks like the cool symbol I want. So I want uh, in backslash capital RE. And that matters if it's capitals or not capitals. So let's update that. How oh, beautiful. And then, um, for my explanation, of course, uh, it's none of these. You might think it's 3 and 1 if you go through this question, 3 and when this one flips over, 1. Um, but you actually need the XER as well, so don't forget. And then I want this code, uh, just the image part, don't need the paragraphs. And you can put that in your answer as well. Don't forget that image update. And then you've written a little explanation to people as to why uh, none of these is the actual answer, even though C looks like it's a really good answer. Now, when you come down here, this is an algebra. This is that first unit we're doing on transformations. So you can just enter that in. And now you can take a look at your question. So here's your question, here's the options, that one's highlighted, the uh, correct alternative is E, here's your little explanation, it's going to be in the unit 1 on transformations, and then you can save the question, and yay, you've got a question. Now as we create questions, um, we can then start to do things like get rankings for them, difficulty rankings and overall rankings. You can comment on them and sort them. Uh, there's a whole ton of cool things that can happen. But I just wanted to show you here how you go about creating questions.